Hey everyone, my name is Eli Dreyfus. You can find me on Facebook at Black and White Imagery by Eli Dreyfus. Today I put together a tutorial of my workflow from start to finish on how I retouch my black and white portraits, and I'm inviting you on the ride. Sit back, relax, and take notes. This is going to be a bumpy one. Learn to go from this to this in just a matter of 30 minutes. First thing I like to do, um, I'm going to do frequency separation, which is pretty much um, separating my image into two different layers, texture and color. So I'm going to call this blur, blur layer, and the top one's texture. So on my blur layer, I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. That looks right, right. So on my texture layer, I'm going to go image, apply image. Okay, that looks terrible, obviously. So we're going to go down to subtract. Make sure your scale is set to 2. Your offset is 128. I'm going to go change that to linear light. And if we group these two together, you can see no changes were made. On my bull layer, uh, I'm going to select my L tool, which is lasso. And I want to someone to draw around her face. So we want to go down to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And you want to make sure you're on your blur, blur layer. I find 13.5 really works for a lot. So um, I just press Command D, which is deselecting uh, the thing I just drew, my outline here. I'm going to do that again and again and again. And we're just going to do the same thing over and over. Drawing around it and applying a Gaussian Blur. Uh, pretty much what we're doing is pressing Command F because we already blurred, we already found our blur. It works, and uh, it's just kind of a shortcut I use. Uh, this looks like a little bit too much, so at the end here, when we're done um, filling in the face, we're just gonna lower the opacity on that group. Uh, we're gonna make a stamp visible layer. Uh, press Shift Option Command E. Now you're gonna press J for spot healing brush. On this layer I'm just going to call it, I'm going to do some uh, spot healing removing. Spot removal. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm just simply selecting over the area I want to remove and just clicking. And it's going to get rid of some of those blemishes. And we don't want to overdo it. We forgot a few spots, that's totally fine. Alright, next thing I like to do is I'm going to make my black and white conversion here. I'm going to make another stamp visible layer, so anything I do above this is already black and white. So I'm going to go sh uh, image, adjustment, shadows, highlights. Make sure my shadows, shadows are set to 35. My tonal width is 50, radius is 30. Now you're just going to press OK here. Now this is called um, a mask, pretty much what is visible in your layer. So I'm going to make a mask on that and press Command I to invert that. As you can see, it's black. For eyes, I always found that 32% opacity is work with working um, with the shadow adjustment. And we're just going to go around the iris here and make those really pop. This is the first step in um, retouching the eyes. Uh, most of the popping it comes through dodging and burning. Uh, which is a method I will go into eventually. Um, all these steps I'm doing are the first steps I do on any given portrait. Color, black and white, dramatic, happy. Uh, these are the first steps I do. Uh, the next thing I want to do is make another stamp visible layer. I want to duplicate this twice. I want to call this sharpening. And I'm going to call this one blur. Now on this sharpening layer, um, I'm going to go down to filter other high pass. Um, and I'm using a method called sharpening through blurring. And um, I'm pretty much sharpening the image 
by adding a Gaussian blur underneath the sharpening layer. Uh, this is going to make the effect look like um, we, shot a real, we shot at a really shallow depth of field, and she's really just going to pop out of the frame. So blur, Gaussian blur, and I always, we want to make our blur just a little bit more than our sharpening mask. Now, using the same method I did with the um, shadows, I'm just going to make a mask here and make sure I'm painting with black. And I want to make sure my um, opacity is sent to 100. Now with black, we're simply going to paint over the side of her face here. We're just going to leave all neck and hair area here. So it just falls out of focus. Which is a really cool effect. Alright, now I want to make another stamp visible there, just in case I want to do any further stuff on this portrait. Alright, this is looking really good. I'm going to double click on this blank layer. This is dodging and burning, by the way. Dodging and burning is lightening of the lights and darkening of the darks. So, um, using option, I'm going to separate those arrows and drag one arrow all the way to the right. Press OK. So, we're going to do the exact opposite and drag that white arrow all the way to the black. Uh, change this to soft white. So, so that's good. We're both at soft white. So on our dodge layer, we're going to change our opacity to 14. So pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over the highlight areas in her face. And I know, as you can see, it's not, it doesn't look like it's doing so much, but when you complete the final steps with, uh, and then you add your burn to this, the image will really, really stand out. So again, I'm just uh, lighting the lights, and with my burn layer, I'm just going to darken the darks, other known as um, contouring. So we're going to contour the face. Pretty much wherever I highlighted, I'm going to shadow. Now on my burn, I'm going to do the exact opposite. Make sure my uh, foreground color is set to black. Put that full screen for you guys. And I'm just going to paint over like I did with Dodge, but now I'm just going to paint over the dark areas in black. And especially for dramatic black and white pictures, um, this is where the true tones and details come out. Yeah, guys, a lot of you guys have been asking me, how do I get those details in the skin? This is one of the reasons. This is one of the, uh, the ways I do it. It's kind of a method of... Um, it doesn't come through dodging. It comes mostly through burning. It's a method of uh, underexposing the skin and kind of burning all out all the highlights. That's one of the next steps I'll do after I dodge and burn. We'll um, kind of pretty much kill the highlights and then we'll bring them back later. So just doing the exact same thing I did with dodge. And for this portrait, the uh, it really works pretty well because uh, she has a really intense look on her face here. <clears throat> so where I dodged in the eyes, I'm just going to go around here and burn those dark areas. I'll show you guys the before and after once we're done dodging and burning to show the true essence of it. And the rest of the popping of the eyes will come through um, curves adjustments.
And um, looks like we're about done with dodging and burning here. Now if I group my dodging and burning, I'll just call that um, DNB. Look at that. So it's flat before. All those tones are just flat. Now with the simple dodging and burning, this is the first step um, again to really make them pop. Now, um, as I mentioned when I was dodging, that we're going to burn the highlights just a little bit more. Um, I, there's always texture and details under the blown out highlights in any picture. Now, um, on this layer, I'm going to go image adjustments. Same thing what we do with the shadows, but I'm just going to do the opposite with the highlights. So I'm going to go shadows, highlights, bring my shadows down to zero. So this won't affect any of the shadow area. We're just focusing on the highlights here. And as you can see, as I bring up those highlights, look at the texture in the skin here. It's all reappearing. Uh, that's simply because um, it was overexposed, as I mentioned. Um, you can, and this will, you'll never get that right. You can never um, expose that skin correctly to get all those details. Because the details are truly there in the person, but with the proper, with the lighting and stuff, you, it's very hard to get them. Now I don't want to apply the whole image here. Um, so I'm going to use the same method I used before with um, masking. And um, I can show you in a second here. So, so look at that, it's insane. So it brings out every single pore that person has. So if I ha go ahead and invert that, you guys can see how much flatter it looks. It just brings out all the details, which is awesome. All right, I want to paint back uh, about 50% 50, 50%, and just paint back in those highlight areas. I don't want it affecting there that much. And note, I'm just painting with white on my black layer. And um, I would not recommend doing this before dodging and burning, because it would not you cannot see the true tones of the picture without bringing them out. This is also it's kind of evening it out here, so a really flat face, tons of detail. Pause on the eye here. And one of the reasons it appears so sharp here is because we've blurred out the bottom section of the image. That's making the, all the attention go right there to the eyes. <clears throat> so, um, I always said I can't make any more adjustments on this layer. So I want to make another shift option command D, a stamp visible layer of everything I've just done. Now, um, the next thing I want to do, um, as I mentioned, I want to hit my brightness contrast layer. This is when I want to do it. Because my skin my skin details look pretty good, my uh, my tones look pretty good here. I just want it to pop a little bit more. Uh, that was too much here because they see how it blows out the highlights. Now um, again we're gonna invert this mask because I don't want it to affect those highlight areas. Uh, but I'm going to pin it back at um, 
bit of a higher opacity here. Again, staying out of those highway areas. Now, a lot of most of my other adjustments from here on out will be all curves. I want to create a gradient map. Now, a gradient map for black and white is going to take all the darker parts of the image, darken them, and all the lights, lighten them. For gradient masks, um, I will always I see the brightness contrast is pretty much for my highlights. The gradient map is for my shadows. It really, again, ruins the um, skin tone here. Now, I just want to invert that mask. And paint it in with white, obviously. And I'm going to paint it in just in those shadow areas. This is one step that will make your life easier when um, trying to create a nice fall off of light. It's pretty much the gradient map, which just takes everything and then see how it's just darkening those darks. I'll use it a lot on the lips here. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to make some curves adjustments here. Bring that curve all the way down. Now, as I mentioned before, um, look what's happening to the skin here. Um, when we're underexposing, all those details come out, and it creates a really so it creates a really harsh, gritty look, which is usually what I go for in my portraits. Now, I want to invert that mask, and as you can see, her face is really, it's actually pretty overexposed if you think about it for these pictures. So I don't want to paint too much, but I'm just going to paint a 45% opacity. There's my brush a little bit here. And with a really soft brush, I am simply going to paint over Pretty much the whole image. And this is the start to the fall off of light here. Now in these portraits it's all about the eyes and the connection the eye gives you. Instead of, um, we don't want to focus on the shoulder area here, that's why we're darkening it a lot. In these last final steps, um, it all comes down to layering. The layering is, um, we're going to do a lot of curves, and then exposures, exposure adjustments, and then our, some more curves. I'm going to under, underexpose her skin very slightly. Pretty much paint in those highlight areas. And those pores are just uh, coming out anytime I do that. And again, there really is the details there, it's just um, we don't see it in our cameras. But actually, I'll just choose my lower, my uh, smaller brush tool and paint in those dark areas. It's looking very dramatic. It's looking very gritty and intense, which is what I like. So we're pretty much in these steps here. We're taking it from a basic black and white snapshot, your average everyday black and white snapshot, to dramatic beauty. And I don't like the crop here, so I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. And I also I like to create um, square crop images. I, I rarely shoot... Um, in full landscape. I always like to crop it into a square. It's more effective for the eyes. And we'll just wait for that to load. Um, if you guys have been seeing my photos, um, you've probably been noticing the matte finish I do. 
Um, it it kind of evens. I like doing all these matte finishes, even on these dramatic photos. If it's all kind of dark, I love doing the um, the uh, matte finish. So to do this, um, it's all in the exposure adjustment layer, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have not seen this before, or you didn't know it existed. But this is my absolute one of my absolute favorite adjustments to make. It's one of the last ones I make too. Um, now, uh, if you guys are thinking, so I kind of don't. It looks too much. Yeah, it looks too matte here. It's bringing too much shadows up. Um, now, usually you would invert this mask, but the key here for the matte finish is you're going to paint with black. You're going to paint on the mask with black, and you're going to get a more softer, a much softer look here. I'm just going to line the photograph. Note that my brush is not leaving. I'm not picking up my hand. So it's just going across the whole image. This gives it a nice, a much more softer look. Um, and it spreads out all the tones much nicer. <clears throat> the last thing I'll do is make a brightness contrast adjustment layer uh, just to finish that off and give it the extra little pop it deserves. And now I'll show you guys the before and after of what we all just did in 30 minutes. Move from this all the way to this. In just 30 minutes. Now I hope you really guys I really hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this. I really hope you learned a few tips here. And um, this is definitely not the last one. Alright, well, have a good day and good luck.